Biology and chemistry are intimately related because we understand biology now in terms of the molecules of biology. And molecules are, of course, the purview of chemistry. So let's look at some biological molecules. Here's ATP, adenosine triphosphate, one of the most important and ubiquitous molecules in your cells. It's important and it's found everywhere because it's, one, a precursor to DNA, adenine is one of the four bases in DNA, and it's an energy storage and transfer molecule. So when you metabolize glucose in your body, that energy is stored temporarily in ATP and then transported about your cells to where it's needed. So let's look at ATP more carefully. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It's composed of a base, adenine, that's this component here, and a sugar, ribose, and you can see it's a five carbon sugar, and three phosphates. So we have one, two, three phosphates. Here I've got the phosphorus in purple, the oxygens are in red, carbons in gray, hydrogens in light blue. Adenosine triphosphate. Now ATP is an acidic molecule. It has three acidic protons here, pKa's around six, and an acidic proton terminally here, a pKa of around two. Now in biological solution, where you're around pH seven, these protons will be removed. pH seven is one pH unit above this pKa, and it's five pH units above this pKa on the basic side. So when you're on the basic side of the pKa, above the pKa in pH, the basic form predominates. So at pH seven, ATP is a highly charged molecule. In fact, that's one reason that it's a good energy storage and transfer molecule. These highly charged nature means breaking it back apart separates those charges, and that's downhill in energy. So ATP is a good energy storage and transfer molecule. Now, ATP has a high energy, I put that in quotes, phosphate bond, because you read that sometimes in textbooks. But high energy phosphate bond is actually something of a misnomer. It implies that if you break that bond, energy is released. And of course, as chemists, we know nothing could be further from the truth. It always requires energy to break bonds. You have to put energy in to break a bond. You're pulling the bond apart. So this is called a high energy phosphate bond because the overall hydrolysis reaction, the reaction of ATP with water, is downhill and does release energy. But it's not the breaking of this bond that releases energy, it's the forming of other, more stable, and in fact, higher energy bonds. So let's look at that. This is the high energy phosphate bond we're talking about. It's actually a rather weak bond because breaking it and forming other stronger bonds is what releases energy. And when you do add water and perform the hydrolysis reaction, you form ADP, adenosine diphosphate, a free phosphate in acid solution. That overall reaction is downhill in free energy, minus 30 kilojoules per mole ATP hydrolyzed, and it's exothermic, and the entropy of the system increases. So ATP can be used as an energy transfer molecule because its hydrolysis releases energy. So let's look at ATP hydrolysis a little more closely. Here is the ATP molecule. And what I'm gonna do is perform the hydrolysis reaction. So add water and form ADP, a free phosphate and acid solution. So protons will be produced in the reaction too. And in general, those protons just jump right onto the phosphate that's formed. So let's look at that. We're gonna have the water molecule bring in, donate a pair of electrons and form this new oxygen phosphate bond. And that is a stronger bond than this one that breaks. So this bond breaks at the same time. So you break a lower energy oxygen phosphate, and you form a higher energy oxygen phosphate bond, overall you release energy in the formation of this 
OP bond. Now, some uh, OH bonds are also formed in the hydrolysis reaction, but they're more or less a wash. The ones that are formed are about as strong as the ones that are broken. Overall, you have a release in energy when you hydrolyze ATP.